Hey there internet, Michael Besog here, and tonight we're going to talk about immigration. Specifically, we're going to talk about the Muslim ban, which isn't a Muslim ban, and the idea of a sovereign nation being able to protect its borders. So we're kind of going to get into the, the wall a little bit as well. So, President Trump signed an executive order uh, creating a moratorium for 120 days on the entrance of visa holders and green card holders of, from seven different countries. I don't need to explain it. You can look it up. It's not a Muslim ban. There are uh, people who are not Muslims that live in those countries that are also not allowed to come in. And really, it's not even a ban. It's just a moratorium on entry for people who are non-citizens, uh, which is complete within the realm of legality for you know the president of the United States um, every single uh, almost every single president uh, in the last you know, 30 years has done something of this sort for some reason and no they're not exact parallels but it doesn't really make a difference these are seven nations that were outlined by the previous president and his administration as uh, areas of concern and really, the issue is that you can't know how well these people are being vetted because the the nation of concern itself is somewhat destabilized. There are people moving in and out of these nations um, and then moving from there through trying to get through to our our country through the like refugee system or through the visa system. And so it's a it's 120 days to look at our process. That's the point of it. So without a, that out of the way. Um, there's there's this question of whether or not it's moral, whether or not it's okay, whether it gives the wrong impression, whether it gives this idea that, uh, you know, we don't like Muslims, for one. Uh, there's seven countries with less than, I think, a total of 11% of the population of Muslims in the world on that list. So, I mean... You can do the math, add up the population of Saudi Arabia and Egypt and Pakistan and Afghanistan and Indonesia, and it doesn't it doesn't equate. You know, the idea, oh, it's a Muslim ban. Well, then we did it terribly wrong. If you wanted to ban Muslims, there's a whole lot of other countries you needed to include on that. Um, that's not the idea. The idea is to look at nations that are somewhat destabilized and say, uh, can we trust that their vetting system, their idea of like identifying who this is, what their background is, what their their um, their aims are, who they're affiliated with, all that stuff. Can that nation tell us that information in a reliable way? Why are we going to take refugees from 10,000 miles away? Why move them from their area of uh, where like the culture is the same, the language is the same, the religion is the same, people are the same and bring them here and put them in in a place where everything is different the way of life is different the values are different you're, you're completely uprooting them and and throwing them into this this terrible like you, you could do that to people from the united states from one state and forcibly remove them move them to another state and, and it would be a shock to their system you can do a whole lot more for a refugee by creating a safe zone for them near their nation than you can by bringing them to a whole other country where they know nobody, don't know the language, don't know the culture, don't know the systems, and essentially are thrown into, you know, like, hey, survive. It's terrible. There's this moral question. Why do we want to take refugees and move them all the way out of the entire region and move them here? It seems people want to do that because it's, it's like playing... Uh, playing chess. They, refugees become this pawn in their political game. And that's just not right. You're asking, if you ask what's best for the refugee, it's best that they stay in a place where they can speak the language, where they have a similar religion, similar uh, culture, similar understanding of how things work. The, acting like it's this moral, moral necessity to move people 10,000 miles in order to protect them is not true. And honestly, it costs a, a heck of a lot less money, which means that we can save, we can create safe areas, feed, clothe, uh, provide health care to 
a lot more people on the, in the in the tens and hundreds um, numbers by keeping them there, just not in the nation that you know in the in the actual country where they're being killed. You just move them to a safe area in a ally nation nearby. It's very simple, and that's what he's that's what President Trump is trying to do right now. People really need to stop using refugees as political pawns. It's it's trashy. It's really trashy. Let's talk more broadly about immigration itself. We like immigration. The United States likes immigration. We let in 500,000 to a million people every year. With that said, if you're going to talk about immigration, you have to start in the same in the, in a place that is um, philosophically, legally, um, constitutionally correct, and that is that no one has a right to come here. Be honest with yourself, intellectually honest, and you'll you'll come to that place. That you'll start there. No one has a right to come here. No one has a right to enter a nation that is not their own. Every nation has an obligation to protect its own citizens. So starting in that place, no one has a right to come here. And then understanding we like immigration. People do come here. We want them to come here. I was talking to somebody about the wall. The wall, it's, she said that it sends the wrong message. And I don't get how it can send any message other than you're not supposed to come through into our country when you're not allowed. That's the message. That's the right message. Building a wall along our southern border, it's something that every president for the last 50 years has been trying to do. If my neighbor tries to come in through the back door, my neighbor gets shot and nobody gets mad at me. They try to come through the window, they get shot. My neighbors come through the front door and they knock first. That's just how society works. And you're upset for that a, a politician is doing what they said they would do. It's hilarious. So I want to make sure that we come full circle and that I clear this up in a way that you can take this argument to your friends and, and you can approach that truest common understanding. Okay? There's three separate issues and you must maintain them as three separate issues. There's this moratorium on entry for seven nations. There is the concept of immigration as a whole. And then there's building a wall. And they don't belong together. A wall has nothing to do with immigration. Because legal immigration is not done by people walking across borders. Legal immigration is always done through ports of entry. So a wall and immigration are not at odds with each other. This wall is not going to block the road that you're supposed to drive through to get into the, the country. The wall doesn't stop somebody from contacting through our embassies and stuff like that, um, and you know through the websites and whatnot, uh, the appropriate agencies so that you can get your visa, get your green card, things like that. The wall doesn't do any of that. All the wall does, and what it is supposed to do, is slow people down who are uh, trying to enter illegally so, so that it gives Border Patrol more time to get to them. That's it. And it'll do exactly that. Immigration should always be discussed in terms of our needs, keeping in mind that you, no one has a right to come here. It is not a human right that you be able to enter the United States. That doesn't make sense. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Those we hold as God-given, inalienable rights. Life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Not life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, entrance into the United States. And as far as banning people from coming here um, temporarily from any nation for any reason, it's all under the purview of co providing for the common defense and is definitely under the authority of the President of the United States. So there's your answer. Those are three separate things, and they should be treated as three separate things. And everybody losing their minds is losing their minds for emotional reasons. They're breaking rule number two in how to not lose an argument. If President Obama had put a moratorium on seven nations, 
for 120 days, nobody would have said anything. And I, I, I don't want conservatives making that argument against liberal, liberals. It's just because you hate Trump. No, it's because your understanding of immigration policy and sovereignty of nations and things like that is wrong. It's broken. That's why. It's not because you hate Trump. Yeah, you hate Trump and whatever. Who cares if you hate Trump? But if you're, if you're really outraged and you're intellectually honest, because you can't be outraged about everything Trump does, if you're intellectually honest, you have to look at what he does and what its effect on the nation, what its effect on the world is going to be, and, and assess it based on that, not because you just hate the dude. And if you still hate what is, is going on, it's because your understanding of immigration, your understanding of sovereignty, are, are, are a little out of whack. That's it. That's all it is. It's not because you hate Trump. It might be, you, you might think it's, it's just because you hate Trump. But it's really because your understanding of those things is terrible. So that's it. That's that's my that's the end of my rant on the the, the Muslim ban, uh, immigration, and the wall. Hey, so the question the question that I have then is if given the ability, if given the ear of legislature and of of the president, what would you do and how would you do it to fix the immigration system? It does need to be overhauled, I think, and I, I I'm not the smartest person in the world. I don't know. How best to do that? I've never gone through the immigration system, so let me know. Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, click like. Um, and the next video I think I'm going to do is probably going to have to do with how SJWs and free speech don't seem to mix, and uh, how if you can't have free speech, you don't get to have civilization. So look for that this weekend. Be safe. I'll see you soon.